At a North Korean government-owned restaurant in Shenyang, China, we watched waitresses perform what would become our favorite North Korean song, Bangap Sumnida, which means, pleased to meet you. My friends chatted in Mandarin with the young ladies, who were doing two-year stints before returning to North Korea. Our educational group of 19 American students and professors was ready to explore the socialist monuments of the most secretive country on Earth. While information would be limited, interacting with real people could be amazing. The next day, we would enter the nation of 23 million at a standstill since the early days of the Cold War. After a turbulent 50-minute air choreo flight to Pyongyang, a large portrait of Kim Il-sung greeted us. We settled into our hotel and ate an unsatisfying meal of Western food. Afterward, we had a glimpse of real North Korean culture outside at the bar. Waitresses sang a cappella as a young girl danced for her large family. Our first morning, we visited the Martyrs Cemetery and had more interactions with regular North Koreans. We saw military personnel and first noticed how all citizens must wear Kim Il-sung pins. Then we enjoyed a Pyongyang metro tour, 300 feet below the city of 3 million. Although we only traveled one stop, we saw hundreds of the capital's residents moving in and out of trains. Pyongyang commuters seemed hardworking and respectful. After boarding the train, I noticed that every car had portraits of Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung. Getting off at Yongwang Station, I realized that they were showing us the metro's best two stations. The Soviet-era underground metro cars seemed to operate much better than the overcrowded trams and buses above ground. The tour continued. In the distance, we saw the nation's tallest building, the incomplete 105-story Ryugyong Hotel. At the Juche Tower, we learned about Juche, the state religion of North Korea, focusing on worship of Kim Jong-il's father. On the third day, we headed south, where we saw soldiers in formation doing agricultural work. There were few cars on the road. Because of major fuel shortages, walking and biking are most common. We gazed at peasants doing manual labor and then approached the demilitarized zone that divides the Democratic People's Republic of Korea from the south. North Korean Major Im Dong-chul toured us around the 2.5 mile wide stretch that extends the length of the Korean Peninsula. Translated by our guide, Major Im explained the 1953 armistice that ended the Korean War. Since then, around 500 South Korean and 50 American troops have died in periodic outbursts of violence. This just shows the aggressive attitude towards us. One million North Korean soldiers currently lie just outside the DMZ. Then we went to the actual border, where the blue buildings are operated by the UN. We peered into cameras manned by American soldiers. Then our guide showed us the tense room where infrequent negotiations between the two Koreas have taken place. The South Korean flag was in the distance. Back on the road, we saw banners promoting a 150-day campaign to increase economic output. Then we headed to a waterfall for a clam bacon picnic, another opportunity to mingle with locals. We exchanged pleasantries, took photos, and even ate food with them. Our meal there was delicious, despite the kerosene-soaked clams. <laughs> then we headed back towards Pyongyang and said our goodbyes to the locals. <laughs> that night, we drove through the capital, past the Juche Tower, to Pyongyang's 150,000-seat May Day Stadium for the pinnacle of our journey, the Arirang Games. The socialist realist mass game spectacle lasts for two months. Six nights per week, over 100,000 performers act out North Korean history. 20,000 schoolchildren with flip cards form a human television in the stands. The 
The next day, we headed to the Children's Palace, an after-school program for gifted students in Pyongyang. Then, the best students put on a stunning show in the main auditorium. Our last supper in North Korea was a very tasty duck bulgogi which we savored more than our driver, cameraman, and guard. The next day, we headed to Kim Il-sung Square in the War Museum, where we heard the North Korean account of the Korean War. Then we saw Pyongyang's Arch of Triumph. The words to Arirang, sung by one of our guides, echoed in our heads as we said goodbye. For World Focus, I'm Ben Piven in Pyongyang, North Korea. Thank you.